Okay, can you tell us a little bit of the history of the band? You know, how you got started, where you guys are from, and how we got started. Well, let's see. How we got started? We all auditioned each other, and we said, "Hey, that's good." Speaking right. of the microphone, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. Now, what happened is that uh, actually I was performing in a club when I was like about 15 years old, and uh, it was really weird. I was only, I was a little, you know, a little turd basket there, and. Uh, <laughs> And uh, this mutual friend of ours saw me perform, you know. And what happened, the next day, I don't know how he got my number, and he just called me up and he says, look, I have this band rehearsing my studio. He owns a studio called Showcase Studios. And, uh, and he just said, look, I got a band here that's just like you, wild and crazy on stage. I mean, you, you gotta get together with these guys. Just check it out. And, uh, you know, I went down there that day. The next day I went down and, God, we played two songs. One was the Immigrant Song, and the other one was uh, Rock and Roll by Zeppelin. And that was it. I mean, we were together ever since. And it's been now, it's going on 11 years. Really? Ah! No! Like, yeah. That's great. Shoot me! 11 years and you still talk to each other and you're a happy group. Like yeah, that. can you believe it? Yeah. Like, you know, what is it with this microphone here? You know, okay. uh, um, how'd you get your first real break? Um, so let me do that over again. How we got a first yeah, break? How did the first break come about? And how'd you get your first recording contract? See the guy over there? <laughs> <laughs> we met him, well, that's what happened. You know what, we got a first break. Really, we sent the tape out to every major label. And they all sent it back. I mean, I still have bags of this stuff saying, we can't accept any unsolicited tapes. Unless from a manager, from a lawyer, or from someone in the record company, you know? And we just said, the hell with it. Let's go to LA, let's go to Hollywood, and become stars, you know, shop the tape and just get, become stars. So Jimmy and I went to uh, California and nobody wanted to listen to it. Nobody cared. You know, there's so many bands out there. And finally, I met our manager, Stan Poses, and he didn't want to listen to it. So he said, to get rid of me, he just said, I'll tell you what, I'll write you down my number in my office in New York, give me a call, and I'll, you know, Beg see what I can, again. yeah, I'll see what, <laughs> see what again, I can man. do for you, you know? <laughs> Yeah, really, and it was like, I mean, I was just sitting there going, I'm going to shoot this guy, you know? And finally, you know, about three weeks later, I called the office up, and he just, uh, I said, just give me the address to a secretary. And we sent the tape Federal Express, and he took it out. He says, ah, what the hell, the kid went out through all this trouble, you know? I'll bring it home. He brings it home, throws it on his bureau, on his desk, you know, about 16,000 other tapes. So, the Cinderella story of this whole thing is really weird, is that, his 18-year-old son, Russ. Russell, Russell, comes out, okay, he's going out to party one night, and he just grabs our tape, you know? He comes home, and he goes, Dad, you gotta hear this band, it's great. You know, comes home drunk. He goes, you gotta hear this tape, these guys are great, you know? He goes, where, where, what are you talking about? He goes, well, it's a tape you brought home. He goes, I'll listen to it in the morning. Sure enough, he listened to it in the morning, the whole band was in the office that afternoon. We had a mutual agreement, like, yeah, okay, we'll let you manage us and see what happens, you know, type of thing. Well, the hell with that, man. Three, three days later, we were signing MCA Records. You were there yeah. at home. I just went to Europe for about, what, three, four days. I came back and says, hey, you're signing MCA Records. I'm like, huh? What? You know, <laughs> well, so. Pretty fast. That's, yeah, it's really well, weird. One of those like, decade long overnight success stories, you know. <laughs> would, you like, would you like to add anything to that, yeah, Mr. Uh, Dick Costanzo? And that's all. Get down with it. <laughs> Get down with it. Yeah. Get down with it. Yeah. I mean, how long did that, that take? I mean, from the time out in L.A. to this whole thing happened? Man, you know, how long did it take, Jim? Three weeks. I have no concept of time at all. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it took all, all of that put together. I think it didn't take more than a month and a half. Yeah, we made the tape in about two weeks. Yeah, we made the tape. We made the tape. Yeah, we took our last dollars we scraped up. I stole some money from my girlfriend, you know, type of thing. I robbed a bank and bought an 8-track. <laughs> and we just did it, you know? That was it. Amazing. Amazing. Well, you mentioned Zeppelin. Uh, who else gave you a musical inspiration? I mean, oh, man. Van Halen. Yeah, I love Van Halen, ACDC, AC Hendrix. Bad Company. Bad Company. Aerosmith. Seven Drugs. Rolling Stones. You know, all these bands. I'm sure we're missing over millions of them. Liberace. Yeah, Liberace. Yeah, we're going yeah, to miss important. a lot because we, we like a lot of them. Yeah. yeah. Those are the main ones, I guess. Can you hear me? In a, hello? Is, it, is this thing going? Hey, <laughs> just blew his part of my ear <laughs> It's part of my French. Okay, so you've got this new album. How long did it take to uh, record that one? Well, the album itself was actually finished. You know what I'm saying? When we came into the studio, there was nothing more to do. 
you know what I mean? The album, the uh, the demos were so close to the album, there was much to do. So what we did, we went in there, we ended up dicking around for about three weeks on drum sounds, you know what I mean? Which was ridiculous. But uh, it took exactly two and a half months to make, which we, we feel it could have been probably made in about a month. No Where did you record it, you say? It was recorded in L.A. Uh, in Oceanway Studios, in Burbank, Master Control, and, and also Suma on Sunset, on Sunset right. Um, how involved are you uh, in the making of your videos? We watch them after they're ready. <laughs> <laughs> what do you have me on mic for? Yeah. Um, it's like this, you know, we you say, we're yeah, we're playing them, and you say, <laughs> you guys I want to, <laughs> <laughs> um, well, it's like this, okay, you get asked a whole bunch of things, well, you want to do this, what do you want to do, you want to change this, and you make the list, and it just, you know, it really doesn't go that way, you know, they, in all honesty, they know what they're doing, the producers and directors, and they do a good job, and it's really easier on us, because we can just sit back and say, okay, well, that's one less thing we have to do, and, that's it, you know. They just come on and say, "Here's the video." I was like, "Man, hey, fuck, it's great," you know. If so. really wrong, when you'll you say something. I'm if sorry. something's really wrong, like something's sticking out of my ass, it's always like, "Yo, uh, you know, come on." Like generally, <laughs> generally though, over here. Oh, sorry, generally, man. Generally, we are asked, you know, up front, you know, for contribution. You know, they do say, "Hey, is there any ideas you have before we yeah. start?" Kind of thing, and then they may expand on them or discard them, whichever you know they like yeah. to do. Yeah, usually a fist and the uh, things, uh, you know, never mind. <laughs> you ever think you'll get more involved in it, or are you just kind of happy with the people who are doing it for I, you now? I think that when, when, things, when things evolve to a point when, you know, you start writing songs for video format, that's when you're more involved, I think. You start conceiving the video before the song's done and stuff. Man, bottom line, it's a song. You know, you got a yeah. good song, gets on radio, you kick your ass, you kick ass, and that's it. You know what I'm saying? Ass, kick their ass, no, kick your ass. Kick their ass, 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 ass kick. Kick. <laughs> you are <laughs> <laughs> and that's a couple of guys who work with us. Inside, inside, inside. <laughs> okay, you seem to have been on a road constantly over the last year. Um, what would you say was the most memorable experience and where you had it? The donkey show on the back of the bus? Nah. Donkey uh, show. Tijuana was, uh, I think, probably. Uh, Iguanas. Yeah. Iguanas. It was probably uh, really uh, memorable. You ever seen really balcony seen diving? Stage Live diving. balcony diving, yeah. man. Balcony I was diving. nuts. People flying yeah. through the air with the greatest of ease. You yeah, it was drunk Mexicans for that, man. I tell you, we played a lot of shows, and uh, all our shows end up being kind of wild, you know? Let me tell you something, man. That show <laughs> was ridiculous, okay? Okay, we have people stage diving. Oh, that's no problem, you know? We, have, we get it. We have a good time with that. But man, when they're jumping off the balcony into the audience and the kid, people are catching them and the things, you know, bottles being thrown. It was like, whoa! Hey, everything's you know? breaking. So Jimmy's, Jimmy's bass shorted bass out in the first yeah, song. Yeah. And he smashed it before the first song ended. The oh, crowd loved that. I think it was just, got going. It just, everything got crazy, you know, everything all, forget it. Oh, that's Very here in the moment. Yeah, that's incredible. Well, you kind of answered this question, but have you toured outside of the U.S.? Yeah. Japan, Tell Europe. Where. Yeah, we toured uh, Europe and we toured Japan. Ah. Um, which, that is Europe, Frank. SAT, man. <laughs> it's that continent over there. <laughs> it's that continent. It's the peninsula. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's what we did. And uh, we jammed, we rocked, we had a good time, and that was it. There, I'll go. We went shopping in Hong Kong. It was really cool. That's it, yeah. We went shopping in Hong Kong yeah, for one really day. Nice. Would you like to add anything to that, Jimmy? I almost got busted, but. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah the boots, that. man. Right. Would you like to tell him about that one? No. Okay, he won't <laughs> tell you. Sorry. <laughs> Some things are better left don't wear alone, huh? Your when you are go better left security unset. In Hong Kong. <laughs> they don't like that. They don't like that. I wouldn't think they do. Right? Yeah. I usually take them out and kick them under the thing. Uh, how's the uh, audiences and cultures differ, like in Japan and Europe, in, uh, compared to here and with each yeah, other? You know, you know what's weird? Everyone, yeah, really. We came. Everyone, when we were going to Japan, it was like, you know, don't get nervous now because you know, Japanese, you know, audience is like, they'll go crazy and all of a sudden they'll stop. You know, it's like, well, I don't know, man. It seemed pretty true. crazy all the whole show, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, it was like, ah, the whole, all the way through, you know what I mean? Even when it stopped. When I did start, stop talking, it, at one point, I remember, it was really quiet because they're all going, talk, listen, yeah. Yeah. what is he trying to say, you know, because they don't really understand what you're He's saying. trying to hear you. So they're yeah. trying to, <laughs> you know, absorb you everything. Translate as well as hear, yeah. 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 But it's very different. America, you know, a U.S. US uh, audience is just like, I love them, you know. They're just they're just crazy, you know. Uh, but also European audience now. It's hard to say. Yeah. That's Welcome. yeah. I, I don't know who's you know. It, it's like they're all competing there. They're all like wild and they're all crazy. It's like, you know, rock and roll. 
You know, you go to see a rock show, you're gonna put your hair down and just go crazy, have a few hundred beers and go wild. So That's what it should be, right? So generally, it was pretty much the same. Yeah, you know? kind of got to. Uh, you kind of got to prove prove yourself to them before they get into it. You know? Yeah, it was our yeah. first tour. Yeah, Europe like. is like that, right? It was like first. Japanese fans are, are, are very polite. Can you do that That's again? The one thing. They're I'm sorry. More yeah, polite. Are, the Japanese fans are polite. You're right. Absolutely. Put it over there, man. I'm so, I forgot your name, I'm sorry. Uh, the drum completely wiped you out. Can you just say that over again? <laughs> no, what I said was, uh, before they uh, really go ape over there, that you gotta prove to them that, you know, you're gonna, you know what I'm saying? It's like, they don't, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, Frank. It's like this, all right? They don't just get into you, man. They, you gotta go up there and show them what you're doing, man. Yeah, it takes three or four songs. Three or four songs in, you'll break them. For the... That's Europe, basically. Germany, you're doing it. You know, it's funny, it's like this, all right? It first, as soon as we went on stage, all right, the first two songs nobody saw us perform in Europe. So the first two songs, they're all just standing there going. And all of a sudden, after the second song, it's like, we approve now of this band. And then they lose control. I mean, we're talking things. It's like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. God, we had, we had, uh, we had people diving on our stage, man, trying to get our tequila bottles, you know? It's like oh, ridiculous. Man. I mean, it's great. That was Rudy, Rudy's son. Rudy. Yeah, that's the way it should be. <laughs> well, that was a pretty funny story. This is another question we have for you here. Um, are there any funny tourist stories? or Any what stories? You know, funny tourist any stories. Tourist stories. I mean, funny what's like really the funniest thing happened? A guy's down in Mexico. Well, I thought I'll tell you what happened to me, and then I'll, I'll pass it along. There's plenty of right. things that happened to us. Well, once uh, we were playing with the Great White Tour, and uh, we're in front of like 6,000 people or something like that. Uh, and I'm one? sitting there singing. No, that was different. And I'm sitting there, I'm singing, I'm doing Never Let You Go. It was a big single for the U.S. And uh, now here are all these eyes looking at me really nice and going, ah, oh, you know, singing this song. And I just, I'm about to hit that big high note. I'm bending over, you know. I bend over my rips, my pants ripped. I ain't wearing any underwear, you know. <laughs> it was different, you know what I'm saying? Everyone had a little eyeful, if you know what I mean. So, uh. Bonus that was kind of an experience, if you know what I mean. But uh, there's plenty of them. I locked Fowler in the car out in L.A., man. It was great. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you couldn't figure out how to get out. I had, I'd had like way too much milk that night, and I was really out of it, and I couldn't get out of the car. He had a little too much to drink. He couldn't figure out how to get out of the car. <laughs> I mean, we locked it. You know, it had inside locks. Anyway. <laughs> How many days did it take that they found you? Or, uh, yeah. No, it was, no, just, it was only about like, an hour. I was more like the driver's seat, man. That's the key. Yeah, that's it. Whoa. <laughs> Whew. They can't fool me for long. <laughs> okay. Just an hour or so. <laughs> uh, the album and the single seem to be exploding now in the U.S. Exploding. Where do you go from here? Mars. Home. Canada. Hell. Canada, I don't know. Where do we go from here? The only, um, well, all we can do right now is sit back and just enjoy what's happening, you know? Uh, what we like to do is uh, we like to keep touring, but right now, you know, it's a little tough touring right now because everyone's having a little problems. And um, new video. there's a new video coming out. There's a new single coming out. And we're just going to keep kicking ass as hard as we can. You know, if you come see the show live, it's a little different than the ballads, though. Trust me, you know? It's a lot more rock and it's a lot more crazy. And uh, it's just a lot of fun. Great. Wish you guys luck. That's it. Thank and you. that's all. That's all. I think that's all. That covers the list. All right.